The Complete Guide to Tokyo Ghoul. It's been three years since Tokyo Ghoul's divisive second season aired, so it's understandable to need a refresher before diving into Tokyo Galler. Here's everything you need to know about the hit horror anime series. Tokyo Ghoul is the story of Ken Kaneki, a bibliophile college student who finds himself lucky enough to score a date with a hot girl. Unfortunately, that girl turns out to be a flesh-eating monster, and the date ends with her harvesting him for his meat. As a wimpy teen trapped in an alley with a deadly predator, Kaneki is categorically screwed, only managing to survive when a freak construction accident knocks out both of them. The girl dies, and a mysterious doctor ends up transplanting her organs into Kaneki to save his life. Recovery proceeds as normal for a while, until Kaneki realizes that regular food has begun to disgust him, and he's strangely tantralized by the scent of human flesh instead. Tokyo Ghoul has a pretty basic normal guy gets turned into a monster in human skin setup, but instead of the usual vampires or werewolves, the beastie is something a little more uniquely brutal. The first season is pretty standard for the genre. As Kaneki goes through a tortured process of adjusting to his new identity. Fortunately for him, he's not alone in this situation. It turns out that ghouls have their own complicated societal structure hidden right beneath the surface of Tokyo life. And Kaneki's lucky enough to stumble into one of their nicest factions right away. And Tiaku is a group of pacifist ghouls who try not to harm humans and survive off scavenged corpses instead. Its members teach Kaneki about his body's new functions, as well as the skills required to survive in society as part of a hunted minority. This part of the story can be divided into a few arcs, but the most important one concerns Kaneki's first encounter with the CCG a government agency tasked with managing that is exterminating the ghoul menace. While participating in a storm of vengeance-driven violence against the organization, Kaneki strikes up an odd acquaintance with one of their members, a man named Amon. While the two are nominally enemies, an act of mercy from Kaneki makes Amon question whether ghouls are really just monsters after all. Since Amon only becomes more prominent in the series with time, Kaneki's kindness looks to have long-standing consequences. However, things go from bad to worse when Kaneki gets captured and tortured by an especially nasty ghoul named Jason. Kaneki had already been struggling to reconcile his morality with his new cannibalistic existence, but he goes a bit bonkers after this hellish experience. Flipping to instinctive brutality as his way of navigating the world. At this point there's a deviation between the anime and the manga. In the anime, Kaneki takes Jason's place at the terrorist ghoul organization AO Jerry Tree. While in the manga he forms his own vigilante task force. Either way, his motivation is the same to protect Antiaku using the violent means that they repudiate. All in all. This change doesn't end up making much difference, because the story's outcome is the same. Kaneki is routinely manipulated by more experienced players, and Antiaku is destroyed in a showdown with the CCG that's gradually arranged by Ao Jerry Tree as part of a bid for power. In the middle of this battle, Kaneki has another mental breakdown. As he realizes that cutting himself off from his new family to protect them by murdering all of their enemies was not the best way to handle things. In a moment of repentance for causing Antiochus downfall and the death of his best and only human friend Hyde, Kaneki allows himself to be struck down by the CCG's champion investigator, Arima. The season ends there. On a note of ambiguity regarding our hero's fate fortunately, it turns out that he's just fine. Well, depending on how you define fine. The poster for Tokyo Gowler happens to feature a CCG agent who looks just like Kaneki with a mix of his black human and white ghoul hairstyle.
So I'm going to go ahead and assume he survived at yet another great cost to his psyche. We'll also have to see how much this new season retcons things from Tokyo Goulet, since it made a few choices that were incompatible with T. Gray's manga version. While the story is simple enough to summarize, Tokyo Ghoul has a Brazilian characters doing anything at any given moment. And enough of them are going to be relevant in this new season that you'll definitely need a glossary. Here's the rogues. Gallery Sorted by each character's factional allegiance. Antiaku. An organization of pacifist ghouls. Headquartered at a coffee shop, they're eventually destroyed in a raid at the end of the second season. Tauke Kurishima the series heroine and Kaniki Senpei in compulsory cannibalism. She has a rough and tough exterior but can be surprisingly nice once you get to know her. Extremely protective of the people she cares about. Hinami Fugachi a kind and gentle girl who becomes the first person to befriend Kaniki in his new life. When her mother is murdered by CCG investigator Kuri Amato, she and Tauka are forced to kill him in turn, initiating Hinami into the violence that follows life as a ghoul. Nishiki Nishio an upperclassman at Kaniki's college and one of the first ghouls that he meets. While they were enemies at first, the two come to an understanding in order to rescue Nishiki's human girlfriend. Rinji Yamo a quiet older brother figure in Antiaku. He still hangs out with Tauka post time skip. Yashimura Antiaku's boss and owner. He advocates for peaceful relations between humans and ghouls, using his exceptional strength to maintain Antiku's status as a neutral power in the ghoul turf wars. Some time in the past, he fathered a half-human child, who's currently the A.O. Jerry Tree member Ito. At the end of Tokyo Ghoulet, he sacrificed himself to protect both Antiku and his daughter. The CCG the Commission of Counter Ghoul is a government organization established to deal with all of the murderous super cannibals that have infiltrated human society. Unfortunately, they don't care much to distinguish between violent and nonviolent targets. Kaudrao Amin, a young investigator in the series Deuteragonist. While he starts out the series hating ghouls due to a traumatic experience in his childhood, his encounters with Kaniki have led to him question that hatred. He's left distraught after the death of his first partner and surrogate father figure, Kuria Mato. Afterward, he forms a strong quasi-romantic bond with his new partner, Mato's daughter Akira. He's MIA after the final battle. Akira Mato a talented young investigator who takes up her father's position after his death. While she starts off resenting Amon for failing to save her dad, they end up working through their grief together and form a strong personal bond. She survived the final battle. She was a Suzuha a strange young man who was raised by ghouls to participate in gladiatorial death matches. At some point, the CCG rescued him and decided to put his psychopathic skills to use in hunting ghouls. While his trauma has left him with a childish demeanor and morbid interests, he begins to heal by forming a parent-child relationship with his senior partner. While that partner is left comatose following the final battle, Juazao lives to fight another day. Sito Takizawa a good-natured young investigator from the same graduating class as Akira who harbors an inferiority complex to her and Amen. He's MIA after the final battle. Kishawarima a legendary ghoul investigator referred to as the god of death, not much else is known about him. He takes out a surrendered Kaniki during the final battle AOGIRI tree this large organized gang of terrorist ghouls dominate one area of Tokyo. Besides participating in basic turf wars. They seem to be cooking up a greater scheme for even more power. 
They're led by two legendarily dangerous ghouls the One-Eyed King and the One-Eyed Owl. Ito this executive of the gang has the appearance of a small and friendly woman. In the second season, she's revealed to be Yashimura's half-breed daughter, as well as the most dangerous ghoul ever encountered by the CCG, the One-Eyed Owl. She's also an acclaimed author, Kaneki's favorite, in fact, under the pen name Senta Katsuki. That's quite an accomplished life for a person who isn't even out of their 20s. Otherwise, Ito appears to be in the know about whatever massive scheme is going on behind the scenes. Ayato Karishima Taoka's estranged brother who disagrees with her affection for humans, after losing their father to tragedy as a child. He's got some serious anger issues. The Clowns this bunch of asshole girls hang around in clown masks and seem to be up to no good. Not much else is yet known. Probably hot topic enthusiasts. Yuta Yamo's old acquaintance who makes masks for other ghouls. He seems nice enough on the surface, but at the end of Tokyo Ghoulay, he's revealed to be part of a clown club that's scheming behind the scenes. So he's probably a bad guy of unknown intent. Unaffiliated other is a Kamishiro the beautiful ghoul girl who tried to kill and eat Kaneki at the beginning of the series. Kaneki has her ghoul. Now, when Kaneki is having a psychotic break, she'll sometimes show up in his mind to taunt him. Her background remains tantalizingly mysterious. As an important adaptational note. The manga but not the anime revealed that she's actually not dead and currently being held captive as material for making more artificial ghouls. Kaneki rescued her from this at some point, and now I think Yamo is looking after her. It remains to be seen whether this will be addressed in the anime adaptation of Tokyo Galar. Hideyoshi Nagachika Kaneki's best friend since childhood. While he's easily mistaken for a ditzy goofball, he's actually quite intelligent and perceptive. When Kaneki vanishes at the end of the first season, Hyde realizes that he's probably become a ghoul and infiltrates the CCG to try and find him. During the final battle, Hyde reunites with his friend and manages to soothe his aching Saul, but at the cost of his own life. Shuu Tsukiyama an infamous ghoul known as the Gourmet for his taste in specific body parts. After taking an interest in Kaneki's unique anatomy, he keeps trying to kill and eat our hero, but he gets repeatedly foiled. Later on, he tries to ingratiate himself into Kaneki's friend group so he can stalk him. Tokyo Ghoulet's anime version excised scenes in which he genuinely becomes Kaneki's friend, so it's unknown if this growth in their relationship will become relevant in Tokyo Galar. Dr. Kano this guy's material was just totally cut from Tokyo Ghoulet, but it should be important going forward. He's the doctor who operated on Kaneki at the very beginning of the series as part of his plan to make artificial ghouls by implanting harvested kagoon into humans. Rize's accident was staged to make Kaneki the serendipitous test run for Kanao's method. He's currently working with A.O. Jerry Tree for unknown reasons. Miscellaneous Golcabulary also known as words from the show you should probably know that I couldn't fit in anywhere else Kagun a retractable appendage possessed by ghouls for the purposes of combat. Incredibly deadly, they come in a number of different shapes, from wings to tails to writhing tentacles. There's a Pokemon style type based matchup system between different Kagun types but that's not terribly important to following the show's action. Kagun come out of an organ called the Kakuhau, which is what gets transplanted into people to turn them into artificial ghouls. Kakuja a special type of Kagun that develops when ghouls cannibalize other ghouls. It looks like body armor big, nasty, and strong. Kaneki has one from consuming Jason, as do a few other characters. Quinkle weapons wielded by CCG investigators. 
They're made out of Kagun and take on their properties. Without them, humans probably couldn't fight Totuto with ghouls. And that's most of what you need to know. If some minor character becomes super important and you end up totally confused because you've forgotten who they are, take it up with Sui Ishida. It's not my fault if Background Clown 5 turns out to be to be the secret evil mastermind behind the entire series. Otherwise, enjoy the new season, and remember to stay beautiful. Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 Review, Recap Summary, Complete Guide to Season 2. Tokyo Ghoul is an amazing anime, in my opinion. Hopefully, you are looking forward to its return, on January 9, 2015 as much as I am. This is a guide that will bring you up to date on Season 1 and lead you directly into Season 2. Obviously, this article is filled with spoilers. So, please stop reading now if you haven't watched Season 1 yet and don't want to have it spoiled. With that being said, there is a lot to cover so let's jump into how this guide is organized. First off, I am not going to discuss the manga at all since I haven't read it. So, I am only going to talk about what we've seen in Season 1 of the anime. It'll give you a detailed summary of the plot and of the characters introduced so far. It'll make sure to mention every important death that took place. Finally, it'll lay out the current situation and what we can expect going into Season 2. Rize Kamishiro and Yakumo Jason Umori are briefly shown in the intro. She is standing over a pile of dead bodies, devouring their remains. Jason tries, unsuccessfully, to subdue her. She gets away. After that, we are introduced to Ken Kaneki and Hideyoshi Hide Nagachika. They are two college students relaxing at Antitakua Cafe. They briefly talk to a waitress, Tauke Kurishima. Kaneki later talks to Rize at the cafe. He discovers that she is a book lover just like him. They go out on a date. As he walks her home, Rize bites his neck and begins to grow tentacle like appendages Kagoon. Succeeds in eating him, but some structural beams from a nearby roof fall down and crush her. Kaneki falls unconscious. He wakes up in a hospital feeling strange and unable to eat the hospital food. He is told that he had some of Rise's organs implanted within him so that he could survive. After being discharged, he returns home and discovers that all the food in his home tastes bland to him, even his favorite burger that his friend Hyde had bought for him. While he's among other people he gets the urge to eat them. He is slowly realizing what is happening to him. In a state of panic he grabs his kitchen knife and tries to stab himself, but the knife breaks. Later, he wanders into Nishiki Nishia's territory and is almost killed. But, Tauka comes just in time and saves him, revealing that she is also a ghoul. Kaneki begs for her help. He doesn't want to kill or eat people. Kaneki continues to struggle with his new life. He is constantly fighting off the urge to kill and eat humans. Part of the reason why the urge is so strong in him is because Rize is essentially a part of him. She was known for being a glutton. So, now that never-ending hunger is inside of Kaneki, he learns that he is special and different from other ghouls. He is the only one to possess one Kikugan a ghoul's eye where the sclera is black and the pupil is red. Other ghouls have two Kikugans. Most of the time their eyes are normal, but when a ghoul becomes excited or uses its special abilities, the eyes transform into Kikugans. Kaneki is also different in this regard since he can't properly control his. Therefore, he wears a medical patch to cover it up. He refuses to accept his ghoulish side, but is forced to in another confrontation with Nishio. Hyde and Kaneki both get attacked. 
Hyde's life is in danger and Kaneki is forced to use his Kagun to stop Nishio. Kaneki is taken in by Yashimura the manager of Antiyaku and Tauka. Yashimura explains that Antiyaku is a haven for ghouls of the 20th Ward. Kaneki has to hide the fact that he's a ghoul from Hyde. Tauka takes Kaneki to Yuta-san the owner of his art mask studio who begins to make a mask for him. Most ghouls wear a mask to conceal their identity when they have to kill or eat someone. Two new characters are introduced. Ryoko Fugachi and her daughter Hinami, two ghouls who decide to take shelter at Antiku as well. We are introduced to two commission of counter ghoul CCG agents also known as Doves, Amon and Mato, who are currently looking for the Glotten Rize, Jason and the gourmet Sukiyama. Sukiyama enters Antiyaku and is introduced to Kaneki. Kaneki is later visited, on campus, by Sukiyama. He agrees to meet up with him later for dinner. He also starts receiving training from Rinji Yamo Yashimura's right-hand man. Kaneki hears a rumor, from Itori-san, that there may be another one-eyed ghoul like him. Also, he hears that the beams that crushed Rize may have been dropped deliberately by someone on the roof of the building. It slowly becomes clear that Tsukiyama has alternative motives for hanging out with Kaneki. He is tricked into entering an underground arena where the audience is waiting to devour him. However, after learning that Kaneki is a one-eyed ghoul, Tsukiyama interferes at the last minute and saves him. He plans to devour Kaneki all on his own. Tsukiyama struggles to come up with the perfect way to prepare a meal consisting of Kaneki. While walking around town, having finished up some training with Yamo-san, Kaneki stumbles upon Nishio being beaten up by a couple of ghouls. He saves Nishio and takes him home. There he meets Nishio's girlfriend Kimi Nishino. They go outside and talk while Nishio sleeps in the house. She explains that she is able to turn a blind eye to all of his murders because he has never tried to harm her or her family. Kaneki promises to find a way to help Nishio recover from his wounds. While Kumi-san walks back home she is kidnapped by Tsukiyama. Kaneki heads to Antiyaku to search for any kind of flesh he can find to take back to Nishio. Just then he discovers a note left outside of the cafe. The note is from Tsukiyama. It says that he...